different mentality you have to approach with the with the gear. Without the gear, you wouldn't have that problem. <laughs> So what kind of balance did you find to be able to get in the shirt, but yet still be able to not beat the shit out of yourself for one thing and in it enough to be able to actually learn the skill? Because the difference now from, from what I'm hearing and seeing and kind of just my own fucking around is the, um, the learning curve for the band shirts is much shorter right. than the learning curve for a poly shirt, which is kind of where they evolved to, where it may take two years for somebody to learn the poly. Some people never yeah. learn the poly shirt. Um, but to learn it, you have to acquire that skill. So how did you go about that? Yeah, the, you know, when you first get a shirt, you got you got to actually learn the groove of the shirt and figure out where it's going to stop you and, and those kind of things. And then from there, it's about, okay, like how do I train to, to be strong in those positions, right? And I was a big fan of board press. Well, did you do anything to break it in? Um, yeah, you'd wet, you know, put it on, put it as high as you can, wet it, you know, you you you, you essentially, and then work down the boards, mm -hmm. you know, can you touch a four board yet? Can you touch the three board? And, and um, Bill Crawford actually, uh, Sebastian Burns is who, I, who, who taught me most of the shirt stuff. Um, he, he, he would come over to Washington to Tommy Fannin's place when he was out there and I would go over. Um, but basically like, what Sebastian told me was you want to learn to touch in the lightest weight possible. So, you know, can you take 225 and almost touch? And if you're really good, like, you know, that groove, you can, you know, because you tuck your elbows, tuck your heart and you learn the patience. So I always wanted to learn when I got a shirt, it was always, okay, what's the lightest that I can get down to like a one board, you know, cause I know with a heavy weight, it will touch. Yeah. But that was something I a lot of other lifters wouldn't do. They would load the weight to try to touch. They wouldn't try to learn how do I conform to touch it? You know, how do I raise up to the barbell versus pull the barbell down? How do I roll my wrists to go lower without dumping? Those, those are all like little tricks that, that metal militia started really teaching. Um, cause they, they learned it in the denim and the denim was just fucking brutal to mm -hmm. try to touch in the denim. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so for me, it was like technique was the most important thing in the, in the equipment. Right. And, and then once you've figured out, okay, where's the groove where I'm going to be, now we can start loading the weight up. And then once, once I knew that the shirt, I'm going to be good in the shirt, once a month I could get it and see how it fits, see how it felt. We would move it around. You know, we learned little tricks about folding the sleeves and stuff like that. How do we set the neckline? Like how do we get more? How do we get less? So there was a lot, of, a lot that went into the poly. Um, like you had to learn the shirt and like what position would let you do this and this. And then when you went to a meet, a lot of times you, you had no idea if you go, you said, okay, that felt, that felt like 90, 95%. Let's jack the shit out of this and see what happens, you know? Um, but I was always, I, I, as, as far as I remember, I never bombed out of a meet. And uh, Ryan Canelli pointed that out to me. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. But the reason was, is I never tried to open with a PR. You know, I would go to a meet and, and I don't know if I learned this from Brent or who, but, you know, we would, I would go like, 87 and a half percent, 95 percent, 105 percent, you know, so like I, w I was the, my third attempt was always a PR and that was it. And but if I had a really good training, you know, like and I felt like I was way stronger, I would open at 90 percent, then go like for PR on the second, then go for the third. And I did the same thing on the bench press. So, you know, that third attempt at the meet, if you missed it, you learned, you learned from that. OK, where did I miss it? Where's my weakness? Is it the shirt? Is it this or is that? And then you go back into training with it. What I found with these new shirts, you know, and I've been in the shirt a lot more coming right back because I'm trying to learn it, learn it like that, is that like there's like one position that's really, really good. And then if it's not in that position, it pretty much is, is useless, you know, um, and you don't have to tuck hard. You don't really want to touch as low as you can, you know, like um, unless you can, you know, drive your body to the barbell um, and, and it just rebounds back up. The biggest difference between the two shirts of, apart from the rebound, yeah. the biggest difference is I always felt like I f was supported in the poly throughout the full range of motion, right? And these band shirts, like when they hand off to you, like it feels like you got 100% of the weight and nothing supporting you. And then it kind of kicks in and you're going, I don't know if this is going to go. And then poof, just fucking flies up and you're like, oh, I think with these band shirts, the biggest thing that are holding people back right now is the mental side because it's numbers they can't fathom. And you just got to have some big fucking balls to put on a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. I think that's why Jimmy's so far ahead. He's he's one of the youngest guys in these shirts, and he, and he's got some fucking some big balls, you mm -hmm. know. Um, 
But I think that's a, the limitation with it because, you know, I was hearing about guys getting 400 plus pounds out of a bench shirt. Yeah. And I was thinking, man, how like throw on a thousand, you know? Um, but, but I struggled from the squat recovering for bench. Me, me and Dave, um, we lowered our speed work on, on the weekends because we, we would go Saturday and speed bench. Um, and so he would squat Friday night. I would be squatting Friday morning, but neither of us were recovered. And so, you know, Louie told us about um, Kenny dropping his – uh, speed work percentages and doing lighter work and people's benches going on. We're going, well, why the fuck aren't we doing that? Mm -hmm. So I think we got down to about 35% of our shirted max uh, on speed work and we would just rotate the exercise every week and, and our numbers started going up. And, you know, me and him were neck to neck for, for you know, basically until I quit. You know, he, he was slightly on top when I left, but, um, you know, we just, we enjoyed training together and figuring that stuff out. Well, with these bench shirts now, I think like a lot of it is your body has to get used to that. You, you, the weight is so far over what, you know, like, Let's say you have a 500 pound bench. Cause I, cause I, when I came back, I said, okay, what do I have to bench raw to be out of bench grand? 600? No. 500? Mm, yeah, probably 500. What about 450? Oh, I know guys benching 450 bench in a grand in the shirt. Now what people don't understand about that, it's not their, their bench is not 450. Their full range bench is 450. Their one board, their two board, their three board. They probably can do 600, 700 pounds mm -hmm. off of a three, four board raw. You know, they have top end strength, right? That's, that's the one thing in these shirts that people don't understand is the people who bench the biggest have really strong lockout power. They just don't have a lot of strength off the chest because the shirt doesn't mm -hmm. work, right? So when I started learning that, I was like, oh, okay, I have to change my, my frame of reference. So going into this meet, when I, before I knew anything, it was like 800 pounds is the goal. You know, and the reason is Matt Smith benched 800 pounds. All right, yeah. <laughs> and I, I went to dinner, when I first came back, I went to dinner with Matt. <laughs> And he walks in and he looks exactly the same as he did 10 years ago. And he just, he tells me he benches 800. I go, well, if he can bench 800, I can bench 800. Mm -hmm. I was like, you know, thanks Matt for the, for the like, uh, you know, go. <laughs> then I get the shirt and I'm testing it. And, and, you know, Matt had given me one of his shirts. It was huge on me. And I could bench 800 in that. Rob made me a custom shirt. I'm probably going to bench a PR at this meet. Mm -hmm. Mentally, that's a fucking mind trip because I'm not as strong as I was when I was powerless, like when mm -hmm. I, and when I was at my peak and I know that, but yet the shirt makes up that difference. So, you know, I've had to learn where's my weakness, excuse me, where's my weaknesses in the shirt? How do I train? You know, I'm doing a lot more, uh, heavy band lockout stuff because that shirt, I feel like that shirt gets you about three quarters of the way up and then, you know, you're on your own. Uh, and it might just be the shirt I have right now, you know, um, it, it, you know, but, but to me, it doesn't push me all the way through. Um, so I'm doing real heavy band lockout work, you know, and I was using like uh, two blues and a purple with like 225 for lockout work, mm -hmm. you know, um, and stuff like that. And, and I never did that when I was at Westside. You know, I never did that. Like we did pin presses and stuff, but I never used that much band tension. But in my head, I'm like, how can I overload? And the best thing I know to squeeze. And that's where I feel like if you look at Westside lifters, everyone's explosive. If they get out of the hole, like snap to lock out. Like the weight gets lighter as you go up. And that's the beauty of the bands versus the chains in, in my mind. That's why, like I know a lot of people like chains. I like bands. Um, as long as you don't, uh, some people get that anchoring effect and, and they mm -hmm. seem to be better with bands. Obviously you got to mix that up and, and you know, you don't want the bands to lock you in. But for me with the bands, um, they teach you to, to, from the minute you pick it up, you have to stay tight. And then you have to accelerate through lockout. And, you know, Louis always explained, like, when you punch someone, you don't stop when you hit them. You have mm -hmm. to go through them. And that was always his visual description for me. And, and it really does. It really makes a difference. You can't move a barbell as fast without a band as you can with a band. Because, like, there's just something that triggers in you that, like, oh, shit, got to squeeze. And you and activate those muscles that don't normally get activated. As that joint angle gets shorter, you don't need as much strength to lock it out. Versus you have where it gets heavier when it goes up all of a sudden. You're always overloading you know, over the top of the movement. So with that new, with the new bench press shirt, I just started looking at it and, you know, I'm still doing the speed work, but I'm, I'm using a slingshot on my speed days now so I can handle a little bit heavier weight because where the shirted bench is compared to my raw bench, there's such a big difference. I'm not going to do speed work with 135. It doesn't make any sense to mm -hmm. me mentally, right? I'm like, that. it just doesn't build my confidence. I'm like, okay, I understand the purpose, but I have great technique. So Putting that slingshot on allows me to handle, you know, three three plates with with bands or chains. Um, well, it's like putting a little bit more gear on for your squat for, that made it. And that's up. and that's what I thought. I said, yeah. 
we always we always did speed work for squats and, and yeah. briefs. Why why not you for bench? Yeah. You know, and then but I make sure I do the dumbbells and stuff after to not mm -hmm. create. You know, I want to still build the chest up and stuff like that. But there's a little bit more specificity in my training because I am just focused on one thing. I don't know if it would be like that if I was with the bench and the deadlift because I, you know, I have extra time to recover and stuff like that. But you know, I noticed a, a lot different forearm uh, like the um, uh, flexors. You know, because you're squeezing so hard and that weight's all there, like there's a lot more pressure on the outer forearms than, than I'm used to and stuff like that. And um, I, I think that, you know, the injuries that people have had is, is because, you know, if you, Cody Plum, he, he, he just came out and trained with me, but he uh, broke his arm. His best bench in Polly was 600 and they put band shirt on and worked up to 900, right? Um, and now this guy is a big bodybuilder, dude. Like he looks real strong, but if your bones and your joints and your tendons aren't used to that, inevitably it's going to cause problems so you you have to find a find that balance um and then you know are you doing the things to recover you know like now soft tissue work i got a stim stuff like that it, it, it's just a different mentality you have to approach with the with the gear without the gear you wouldn't have that problem because you know you just work up to what you work up to but i still believe that raw lift is one of the biggest missing pieces apart from the box squat i'm always going to be a fan of a box squat i don't think anybody shouldn't box squat i don't care what anybody says if you box squat the same as your free squat you should box like well, why i mean what would be your reasons why they should why they should box squat yes first of all it's a repetition like if, if you set the box at the right height right it's going to get passed in, in your legal competition every repetition is to depth there's no short change there's no question every repetition is to where you need to be so the movement pattern that repetition if it's is it, trying to get perfect reps right mm -hmm. Second thing is, is there is a level of confidence that you have knowing there's a box under you to sit down onto, right? So sitting back, you know, a lot of lifters don't sit back right because they feel like they're going to fall over. If you've got a box there, you know, we can find it. And what I see with a lot of uh, raw lifters is I feel like even on the bench press, they drop the weight in the hole. They'll come down and then they'll drop the weight. They lose all their tension. And back in the day when the barbells were shitty, you get a lot of flex. So if you caught that barbell you would get that rebound effects that doesn't that doesn't happen anymore right? you don't see the bar fucking whipping yeah, yeah, yeah. so i don't it doesn't make sense to me how they dive bomb at the bottom like you know it, I, it works for them and i wouldn't say you know you have to change it but i think that that could be stronger um and then you, you know the, the regular bet, box what stuff breaking up the eccentric concentric you know learning to learning to drive out of the hole to spread the floor like all of those things in and you can to me, what you should do for any lift is film from the side and watch the bar, the bar path. If the bar path goes up and down in a, in a vertical line, that's a good technique. I don't really give a shit what your body's doing. Mm -hmm. If the bar stays you know, in a vertical line, it's good. The bar goes forward and then back. You got some fucking work to do, right? And you got to figure that out. The great thing with the box is, is if that bar goes down, and of course, a lot of people rock on that box, but as long as you stay tight, but that bar is up and down, up and down. When you free squat, every rep is kind of a guessing game, right? And unless you go as deep as you can go, you know, which you don't need to do in competition. And to me, again, my mentality is I'm going to win. I'm not going to fucking pat myself on the back. Like I'm going to win a competition. That's all I ever wanted. Win competition, set records. Oh.